All right, welcome to day two on our trig graphing unit, and uh, today we're going to tackle the cosine curve. Yesterday we went through the sine curve very thoroughly, and I think today's video is going to be a little quicker just because we've kind of established the concepts of amplitude, frequency, and period, and we're not going to have to start from scratch on those. But uh, what we have sitting in front of us right now is a complete cycle, one complete cycle of the cosine curve. And you'll notice it's it's a lot like the sine curve, except it's kind of shifted, um, let's see, I would say uh, 90 degrees to the left. Um, but here's the difference. So instead of starting with a root, like sine did yesterday, cosine starts with a max, okay? And then it goes to root number one, and then it goes down to its min, and then it goes up to root number two, and then it finishes with its second maximum or max number two. So we've got max root min root max. Um, and it kind of looks like a serial bowl almost, you know. And that's how I remember. Cosine starts with the letter C. Serial starts with the letter C. And this is the one curve that I could, you know, theoretically, you know, eat some cereal out of. But uh, so anyway, let's look at a few other examples of what the curve might look like. My second picture here that we've imported um, shows two complete cycles of the sine curve, and, and I don't know why these labels are goofed up the way they are. Uh, they didn't translate real nice, but let's pretend um, let's pretend those aren't there. So on the x-axis, we've got pi over 2. That's where the first root is. Our min is always going to be at pi. Our second root's at 3 pi over 2, and then our second max is going to be at 2 pi. And then this graph is symmetric with respect to the y-axis, meaning that we could literally fold the graph right on that line, the y-axis, and they would perfectly overlap. So our other root's at negative pi over 2, and then at negative pi, we've got a min, negative 3 pi over 2 is a root, and then negative 2 pi is a max. Um, so that's what 2 cycles looks like, and that's what, it, if we graphed from negative 2 pi all the way to positive 2 pi, that's what the graph would look like. And then last but not least, we said this last one, similarly to this, the sine function we saw, this one is in radians. The x-axis is in radians. The only trick is it's not labeled in terms of what? Yeah, pi. It's not labeled in terms of pi. Um, so we can kind of logically deduce where things are. This min right here, guess what that x value is? Hopefully you just said pi. Uh, this max you see, guess what that is? It's a little beyond 6, right? That's 2 pi. And then you can work in between. What's halfway between a max and a min? Yeah, right here, this root. And that's at pi over 2. And this root's 3 pi over 2. So that's where it would fall on the x-axis if it wasn't labeled in terms of pi. So we're going to talk about how do we create the cosine curve. And we're going to, again, show you how everything comes from the unit circle. Um, I've already drawn my x and my y axis. I've labeled my x axis with the four main critical points in terms of pi. Hopefully you're feeling more comfortable labeling them compared to yesterday. So I'm going to start here with zero degrees. And uh, cosine is all about the x coordinate. So the x coordinates all the way around that unit circle are going to describe the values of cosine. Okay? So. Let's see what we got here. The x coordinates are 1, so at 0 degrees or 0 radians, I've got a height of 1, so I'm starting way up here. And then up here at 90 degrees, aka pi over 2, the x coordinate is 0, so that's why I've got a root. And then back here at pi, or 180 degrees, the x coordinate's negative 1. Uh, here at 270, also known as 3 pi over 2, the x coordinate is again 0. And then we finish here at 360, also known as 2 pi, and the height is 1 again. So we'll just connect that with a nice smooth curve. All right, and there's your generic basic cosine curve. Okay, we're going to introduce the calculator again, and again, I don't care where it is, go get it. I'm going to have you do some manipulations on the calculator, and you're going to, I'm going to encourage you to use it throughout the rest of this video. Uh, but we'll start off here with uh, the first thing I do, I go to y equals, and I'm going to type in the cosine of x. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit that zoom button, and I'm going to go with number 7, zoom trig. We introduced you, that to you for the first time yesterday. Now, the good thing about zoom trig is it's going to automatically correct you um, regardless of whether you're in degree or radian mode. Now, I'm going to suggest that you're in radian mode here for the rest of our discussion. So once you hit zoom trig, it'll hopefully spit out this picture. Now, remember, the left edge is negative 2 pi or negative 360, and the right edge is positive 2 pi. It goes as high as 4 and as low as negative 4, but how many cycles do you see? Yes, you see two complete cycles. Now... Again, let's talk radian mode. When you first hit zoom trig, 
Remember how we said it, it said uh, the x min is going to be negative 2 pi? What I do is sometimes I don't want to see that much. So what we're going to do is I want you to move your cursor up here, and we're going to put a 0 in there. And that's what I want you to do right now on your own. If you do that, okay, here's what your screen's going to look like. We've got a new x min of 0. I didn't touch anything else. I left the x min and everything below that. I'm sorry, I left the x max and everything below that the same. I'm only tweaking the x min and making it 0. Now, once you hit the graph button, now you're going to see a picture that looks like this. So the left edge of our screen is now at 0. The right edge is still intact at 2 pi. And now I only see the standard interval in one complete cosine curve that goes max, root, min, root, max. Well, now we're going to review the definitions of the three mega properties, the three concepts that we put a lot of time and energy into developing yesterday, and we're just going to review them briefly today. The first one is the curve's amplitude. Uh, the second one is the curve's uh, frequency. And the last one is the curve's uh, period. And what I want you to do for you for a moment is I want you to, you know, to hit the pause button and I want you to develop and kind of think about how you would word these three definitions and then come on back and hit play and see if we got the same thing that we put in there yesterday. I'm going to go ahead and write these out as well. So here they are. Here are the three definitions um, that we used yesterday. We defined the amplitude as the height of the curve above the midline. So basically we find the maximum point and we just ask ourselves how far is that maximum point above the x-axis. And that's what we said the midline is typically the x-axis until next week when we start doing vertical shifts. Uh, frequency is going to be the number of cycles that you reach at 2 pi. And again, we put a note in there yesterday that that's assuming, of course, that you start counting at 0. So number of cycles between 0 and 2 pi. Um, the period is just going to now be the number of radians it takes to complete that very, very, very first cycle. Um, and then there was a special formula yesterday, and we're going to use the same formula for cosine today. It won't work for tangent, but it will work for cosine and sine. And we said it's going to be 2 pi divided by whatever the curve's frequency is. And so we're going to use that same formula today. Okay, here again is our just our very basic, most general, generic cosine curve. Y equals the cosine of x over the, in its graph, obviously, over the interval 0 to 2 pi. Um, if they wanted me to go further, we could. We would just repeat the same cycle over and over again. Uh, property number 1 is that it has an amplitude of 1. That's the height from here down to here. Uh, number 2 is the frequency. The frequency is 1. You only see one curve. Property number three is the period is going to be 2 pi. That's how many radians it took to complete the first cycle. Let's see. Property number four. Let's say that the domain is all values of x such that x is an element of the real number system. And basically what that means is we're going as far left as negative infinity, as far right as positive infinity. The curve just goes on forever and ever again and again. And then the interesting one to me is the range. We never go higher than 1. We never go lower than negative 1. So I'm going to say the range is all y values such that negative 1 is less than or equal to y, which is less than or equal to positive 1. That's the maximum height and the minimum height. So those are the five basic properties for the generic cosine curve. Now we're going to start to incorporate uh, more coefficients and tweak the amplitude and frequency. All right, let's try y equals 3 times the cosine of x. So what we've got here is we've now got an amplitude of 3 um, because of that rascal, of course, right here. We've got a frequency of 1 because the coefficient right there is a 1. And then the period is going to be 2 pi divided by the frequency, which in this case is just 2 pi. So here's how I'm going to talk myself through this graph. I'm going to label the four main critical x values. We've got pi over 2. We've got pi. We've got 3 pi over 2, and we've got 2 pi. Okay, now my sine curve, or my cosine curve, oh, let's go up as high as 3 and as low as negative 3. So my height, I'm going to start with a max, and I'm going to end with a max. Halfway between those two maxes is a min. Halfway between the first max and min is a root. And then halfway between the min in the second max is another root. So we're just going to now connect that with some real smooth curvature, make sure that the lines aren't too straight, kind of get the cereal bowl looking. Same thing as original cosine, except that it's taller and deeper uh, as far as its height scope. For my second example, I want to try y equals negative cosine of 2x. 
and two little bear traps here to sort out. Now as far as the amplitude goes, it's going to be the absolute value of that leading coefficient. And so I'm going to say the amplitude is a 1. Um, let's see, the frequency is a 2 and the period is going to be 2 pi divided by the frequency. So it turns out in this case just to be pi. Now, okay, what does that negative do? Let's review that from, let's put a little asterisk here in our notebook. That negative out front, okay, all it does is it reflects my graph, oops, it reflects my graph over the x-axis, all right? So what used to be a max is now going to be a min and vice versa. What used to be a min is now going to be a max. So here's the deal. Here's how this shapes out. We've got our axis here, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi. Um, I'm going to need, I only have, I don't have to go real high. I've only got to go as high as 1 and as low as negative 1. And now we're ready to graph. Now here's the trick. We have to finish that first cycle by the time I get to pi. So I'm going to give myself a little stop sign right there at pi saying, you know what? By the time I get there, I better have completed the first cycle or else I'm in trouble and i got to erase it and start over. So here it goes. I know that I've got to start, well, here's where it gets tricky. We used to start with a max and end with a max, but because we reflected it over the x-axis, we're going to start with a min and end with a min. Halfway between those two mins is now a max. Halfway between a min and a max is a root, and halfway between a max and a min is another root. Now, curiously enough, what were the radians on those? Well, if they wanted me to label those roots, which is very, very possible, halfway between 0 and pi over 2 would be pi over 4. That would be my midpoint. And then halfway between pi over 2 and pi would be 3 pi over 4. Okay. Um, and then we're just going to be real nice and smooth the best we can. Got some curvature involved there. And I'll tell you what, never be afraid to throw that into your calculator and graph it that way to get a general idea of what your final picture should look like. Now, from pi to 2 pi, I'm just going to repeat the same conversation I had with myself a few minutes ago. Start with a root. I'm sorry, let me rewind that. Start with a min, end with a min. Halfway between those two mins is a max, and then halfway between a min and a max is a root on both sides there. So the curve looks like this. Now those other x-intercepts, this one would be 5 pi over 4, that's halfway between pi and 3 pi over 2, and then the other one would be 7 pi over 4, so it's basically the odd multiples of pi over 4 are where those four roots are going to be. Okay, here's a nice example in number 3, y equals 4 times cosine of 1 half x. We've got an amplitude of 4 that describes the height. We've got a frequency of 1 half, so we're only going to see half of a normal typical cosine curve. And then the period would be 2 pi divided by 1 half, which in this case turns out to 4 pi. So if we really wanted to see the entire curve, we'd go all the way to 4 pi. Now for my standard interval, 0 to 2 pi, let's see, we'll get the stage set here before we're ready to dance. Now I'm gonna got, I gotta go all the way up to four, so I gotta really stretch this out on the y-axis, scale it appropriately. Okay, now I'm only gonna see half the cosine curve. Now normally the cosine curve looks like the cereal bowl, but we're only gonna see half of that. So I'm gonna basically from here over, I'm not gonna see that when I'm done. I should, so I'm gonna tell myself I need to start with a max and I need to end with a min. So I'm gonna put a min way down here. Start with a max, end with a min if you're only gonna see half. Halfway between a max and a min has got to be your root. And then from there, it's just a matter of paying attention to your curvature and getting it synced up right. So that's what y equals 4 cosine of 1 half looks like. Don't be afraid to throw it in your calculator, graph it, and go zoom trig and get an idea of what it should look like. Or better yet, do zoom trig and then change your x min to 0. That's my favorite window of all time. All right, the next four problems are going to be multiple choice questions where they've already given you a picture of a curve, and we've got to try to figure out what curve it's describing. All right, so our first one, the good news is all the choices are in terms of cosine. And I knew it was cosine because it didn't start at the origin. That's one of the things you'll hear me repeatedly say. Now, the height here is got a height of 1, so I instantly know that the amplitude is 1. 
And then they said, okay, from 0 to 2 pi, how much of the curve do you see? Well, I only see half of the cosine cycle. So those are my two main coefficients here. We know that the general form, A times the cosine of Bx, we know that A represents the amplitude, and we know that B represents the frequency. So once you know those two things from the picture, we can go over here and pick out choice D right here. That would be our winning choice because we got an amplitude of one and then this frequency of one half. All right, now the handy thing here in my second example is because you'll notice that the curve starts right at the origin, it has to be the sine function. So we're gonna eliminate C and D instantly without really any effort. Now after that, my height is two, so I know I've got an amplitude of two above the midline, and how many cycles? So I see one cycle at pi and then a second cycle at two pi, so my frequency is two as well. That's why I'm gonna jump on choice B because I've got both an amplitude and a frequency of two. All right, now we start at the origin again, so again, the good news, it's sine. Unfortunately though, Unlike the last problem, all four choices are in terms of sine. If I had any cosines, I'd eliminate them right away. Um, my amplitude is one. My highest point has a height of one. So what I'm gonna do is I am gonna eliminate choice A and B right away because they both had amplitudes of three and I know that can't be true. The next question is how many cycles do you see? What is your frequency? Well, let's see, right there's the completion of the first, there's the completion of the second, and at two pi, that's the completion of the third cycle. So if my frequency is three, I'm gonna go jump on choice C. Okay, my fourth and final graphing picture here before we go talk about concavity and curvature is, um, again, are, did we start at the origin? No, we didn't. So I instantly know that this is a cosine graph of some sort. So I'm gonna eliminate choice C right away. The other thing you'll notice is that it's upside down. We started with a min instead of a max. So I know I need a negative coefficient, but both choices A, B, and D do have that negative coefficient, so I wasn't able to eliminate anybody based off that criteria. Um, it does look like my amplitude's a one because of that, well, we should say the height from here to here is one. And frequency, hmm, well, let's see, at pi, I completed my first cycle, and at two pi I completed my second cycle, so right there's my two. Let's see, I'm liking choice A, we've got the negative one in front for the coefficient, and we've got the two right there for frequency, choice A is our winner. All right, I wanna to introduce to you the idea of concavity and as a way of describing the curvature of a graph. Um, and we're gonna start with the sine curve. We're gonna say, starting with zero all the way until we hit pi right here, this graph is concave down, all right? It's kind of curling down. Um, and uh, so basically, anytime you see this, that's concave down. If you saw um, a happy face, that's concave up. So frowny face is concave down, happy face is concave up. And then from pi until we hit two pi, we are concave up. So sometimes I'll ask you the interval in which these curves are concave up or concave down, and that's uh, very simple for, for sine. Now cosine gets a little more interesting, so let's go take a look at him. All right, well, with regards to concavity, I promised you that cosine was a little more interesting, so here's the deal. Um, from zero to pi over two, what do we have? All right, from zero to pi over two, we need to stop right there. This is concave down. Now, from pi over two until three pi over two, this is concave up because of the way we're kind of bending and curling. And then from three pi over two to two pi, we're now again concave down. So we've got three different intervals we want to describe. So for instance, on the if I wanted to know when is cosine concave down, I would say from zero to pi over two, union three pi over two, to two pi, those are the two intervals married together. And then if they wanted to know when's the cosine curve concave up, I would just say one interval, starting at pi over two and ending at three pi over two. Okay, so those are kind of like my endpoints on my interval describing the concavity. So if you can visualize that concavity, it's really gonna help you draw these curves more accurately as things get more complicated in the next couple of days.